Hey everyone, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make Tech House like this. So yeah, before I dive in and show you everything, um, as usual you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. And yeah, here we go. So, the first layer I have here is this kick, which sounds like this. It's pretty straightforward. I didn't really do anything pro any kind of processing. It's just a nice punchy kick sample that fits nicely with the groove and with the track. Um, I do have this little high pass filter that comes on. It's like an EQ8 here. That's just for the buildup. And yeah, the next layer we have is this bass, which sounds like this. So the way I came up with this was basically I just took these notes that were in the F minor chord. Um, we just have F, F, G sharp, the minor third, and then C, the fifth. And then up here, we just have a high G sharp. Um, so yeah, so this is just a nice way to write these bass lines. Like if you just kind of take the notes from whatever chord key your track is in, if that makes any sense. Like in this case, the track is in F minor. Um, and then just kind of write like some kind of bouncy, you know, syncopated 16th note bass pattern like this. You really can't go wrong. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot out there that you could definitely try and do. Um, I do have some slides in here as well. You can see like, you can hear it just kind of slides up there. That's just, you know, adding a little extra stuff to it. And yeah, as far as the sound goes, it's just two sine waves and operator. Uh, all I did was just turn up the second one. It's got the same pitch and everything. Um, and yeah, that just gives it like a nice kind of like tone. So yeah, and then if you look in here also, I set the voices to one and I turned on the glide. So that's just for those little slide notes. Um, and yeah, after that, I have a little bit of saturation. Nothing too crazy. Just turn up the drive a little bit and a little bit of side chain compression as well as this EQ8 which comes on in the build just like with that kick just a nice little low pass there um and yeah so this is pretty simple to write these kind of bass lines the only th advice I will give you is kind of like start with your kick and bass it's the reason why they're the first two tracks in here is because that's what I started with um and that's what you really need to start with when you make these kind of tracks like they're very they're very much based on the kick and bass like the kick and bass I was giving it all of the groove because the bass is obviously sort of, you know, jumping off of the really straightforward kick. But if you can get your kick and bass sounding nice together, meaning like, you know, they sound good groove wise, they sound good sonically together, like they sound nice just the way they sound together, if that makes any sense. You're really setting yourself up for success and a lot easier of a time when making a track because truth be told, once you get the kick and the bass down together, you know, it's really not too hard to build the rest of it around there. Um, so yeah, so the next layer I have here is this little key chord stab thing that I made, which sounds like this. So this is pretty straightforward. It only happens in this little build up here. We just have this little F minor chord. Um, like I said, it's an F minor, just like the bass line. Um, and then for the synth sound, we have one saw wave in analog. It's going into a low pass filter with a bit of an envelope, which is shaped like this. No resonance. Um, the amp envelope is just set like that as well. And then I have a little bit of vibrato just for some extra kind of like, you know, just vibe. I feel like it just makes it a more interesting sound. Um, so then after that, I have this chorus just to give it a little bit of stereo width. I played around with it a little bit. There's without, and then here's with. So you can hear, it's just giving it a bit more depth stereo-wise. Um, and then I have that going into this echo, which is set for 16th notes. And I gave it a little bit of reverb, and I turned the dry weight up pretty high. And then we just have that side chain to the kick just like with the bass line. Um, so yeah, so the next layer I have here is this open hi-hat. It's pretty straightforward. I'll just show you all my percussion at once because it's all pretty simple. So we have these three, this open hi-hat, this clap, and then this closed hi-hat. 
pretty straightforward there. You know, those are just like pretty essential elements for any tech house track. Um, the open hi hat is just playing on the upbeats. The clap is just playing pretty simple. And then with this closed hi hat, we have kind of like this pattern where it's sort of like like that. Um, it has a little bit of swing on it as well, just to give it like some more groove. If I turn the swing off, feels kind of weird. So yeah, and then the other percussion we have going on here is we have this one. So it's like this little thing in the background. It plays on the upbeats just like the open hi-hat, um, but I think it gives it like a nice kind of like organic element. This does sound very strange, but I noticed like if we play all of this with the kick and the bass, and then we turn that off, you can hear it feels kind of weird. Like I feel like this thing sort of helps to ground the hi hats, like because this this track and like a lot of tech house tracks are very much and is and are very much based in like the low end. Um, so that is kind of you know a thing here. Like when you bring in these hi hats, they feel kind of strange. They feel kind of like out of like not really part of this world. And I feel like that just helps ground it. Um, so then the last percussion layer I have here is this little drum rack, which sounds like this. So basically, the way I put this together was I got a bunch of different percussion sounds. And I just put them in a drum rack and made this kind of pattern that went with the drums nicely. And yeah, um, it's pretty simple, you know? It's just like a nice extra little thing. I feel like with Tech House, you, you really need this kind of stuff. Like if I turn this off, it doesn't really have nearly enough groove, even with like a very groovy bass line that we have here um, and all the other percussion. But once I turn this on, I feel like it's like the perfect bridge between the low end percussion and the high end percussion. Um, so yeah, so the next thing we have here is this 909 snare which is in the build up which sounds like this. So this is pretty straightforward, I just grabbed this 909 snare sample, put in some 16th notes and then added the little swing to it that we have on those other percussion elements, and then what I did was I took this utility and just did an automation for the gain going up over the course of this time. Um, this is something I hear a lot in tech house tracks, like, obviously, like, you know, in, like, big EDM tracks, you know, they usually have, like, the builds that, are like, it kind of, you know, the snare gets incrementally faster, but in tech house, it tends to just be, like, a 16-note snare or, you know, something simple but just kind of very powerful and energy building like that. So I just took the snare or nine snare and yeah. It's just building energy and tension in there. Um so the next thing we have is this little crash sample which sounds like this. So the way I made this is pretty straightforward. I just took this crash and I put it into a simpler um, and then I made these two little clips, so one is just like a, like one hit there, that's just for when the beat drops, and then here we have some 16th notes, again it's got the groove on it just like the snare and all the other percussion, um, so that kind of like bridges the gap here. The thing is we have this operator doing like a white noise sweep. And I didn't, I didn't want it to keep playing during this last bar before the drop, but I also didn't want to just have nothing in there, so I added this little crash. And yeah, and then it also plays, like I said, when everything drops. So the last thing we have here is this little white noise sweep thing that I made here with Operator. Um, it sounds like this. And so the way I made this was basically I just took some white noise in Operator and then I had this going into a bandpass filter with a little bit of resonance. Um, and what I did was I put in like one long note here and then one long note here that's a little bit shorter. 
um, which I'll explain in a second. And then all I did was I just automated the frequency to open up. Now, you'll notice I didn't have it go all the way up. Um, that's because if you let it go all the way to the top of the sweep with a bandpass filter, you can hear it just kind of fizzles out after a certain point. Like, there's a certain point where it's just going to cut out all the sound that we can hear with our human ears. So I just took it and put it up to a certain point, and then it stops there, and then it, it the filter drops down there for that little part. And so, like I was saying, I'm going to explain the reason why I made this one just four bars and this one seven bars um, is just because when it goes down... It felt like it was a little bit too long being like a full eight bars or seven bars or whatever. Um, so I just made it like half as long. And yeah, so for processing on there, we have a side chain. And then I have it going into a high pass filter to cut out all the low end. Because when you're sweeping from the lowest part of a band pass filter to the highest part, you get a lot of nasty low end. Which you may be able to hear or fear feel now um also fear um but yeah so i have the high pass on there and then i just have that going into this auto pan so what i do with the auto pan was i automated the amount and then the rate to go up during the time where the filter is sort of like sweeping up so it gives you like this cool kind of effect if i play this i'll play it from like here I feel like it's kind of making it more intense than if it was just this. Yeah, this definitely works. But it sounds cooler and just a little bit more interesting and a little bit more professional, to be honest with you, I think. When we have like this, it's, it's just a lot cooler. And then I, I, if you'll notice, I automated the device on for that. I just have it turn off there because obviously we don't want it on the little down sweep there. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one. Like I said, you know, the main things to think about are definitely when you're starting a tech house track, just start with the kick and the bass, get it over with. That is really what everything works off of. So if you can get those two things sounding good together, you really won most of the battle. Um, and then like the stuff with the percussion and then this little effects and build stuff. Um, so that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you thought of this video in the comments. And make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Check out my social media. It's all on the screen now. And I will see you again tomorrow with another tutorial.